everyone, welcome to this Sims 3 house design video. So today I am renovating this house here, um, which is called Brownstone Beauty, and it is one of the um, base game bin houses that came with The Sims 3, but were not placed in Sunset Valley. They were just, um, you know, in the bin. So we saw the front of the original house, and then right now we're looking at the living room, and now this is the kitchen here which is interesting with its colors and also the traditional bottom cabinets and the very modern upper cabinets. But yeah, so this is the kitchen here. And then I think the last room we'll look at is the original uh, main bedroom, which has a fun turquoise and red color scheme. So yeah, this kind of just gives you an idea of what the house looked like originally. And now we're going to jump right into the renovation. So this is a somewhat longer video. Um, so yeah, it's very quite a very long video and this is sped up eight times. So um, occasionally I, I do like eight times instead of seven times speed for these longer ones. Um, so it's not like a hour long video, but yes, this house is called Brownstone Beauty. And one of the things that bothered me about this one in particular is that it's made of brick, as you can see. And I did look this up just to make sure I'm not wrong, but yeah, technically a brick house cannot be a brownstone because it has to be made of brownstone, which is a type of sandstone that is used on brownstone houses, and they're called that because of how they look. Um, so yeah, I did I did look it up just to make sure I'm not wrong about this, but apparently um, brick houses are townhouses, um, and brownstones are also townhouses, but brick houses are not brownstones. So it it's kind of, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's typical for these kind of base game houses, of course. You know, of course, they named a brick house a brownstone when it it's technically not a brownstone so don't worry i did make it a brownstone um so it does suit the name now in, in the end um so yeah and i wanted to make this look a little bit more ornate especially on the front because a lot of brownstones i mean especially ones this wide in my opinion i think this house is too wide it's um i think it's nine tiles wide because you have like the five on the one side and the four where the where the door is and so I think it's nine tiles wide, which I think that like six or seven would have been better. I think this is too wide for this kind of like townhouse style of house. But um, unfortunately, it's, it's you know, I'm not going to start messing with that. So I just decided to keep it the same width. I didn't want to change it that much. But since it's so wide, it needs to look like fancier for sure, because in, you know, cities that have... Um, brownstones, especially like New York, the really wide ones are very fancy because they're bigger. So I wanted to add a lot more detail on the outside. So I actually expanded it upwards a little bit. So the house originally had just a gable roof with like an attic in it, and that was kind of the fourth floor, but there wasn't anything up there. And so I added a true fourth floor and then kind of it's just at the front though, and the back is just like the roof slopes all the way down to the third floor, as you can kind of tell. But it does give the house more height um, in the front. And, and I also, you know, add a lot of details, which you'll see using kind of like these roof decoration um, objects, which I've never really done before. So it's kind of a new thing to experiment with, but you'll kind of see how I add in some more decoration to, you know, what otherwise would be flat walls. But basically the house originally had four bedrooms and I believe two and a half bathrooms. And the house in the end ends up having five bedrooms and five and a half bathrooms. So I add an extra bedroom and I add an extra three bathrooms to the house. Um, but it ends up being a pretty good ratio when you have five beds, five and a half baths. So every single bedroom has its own um, de dedicated bathroom. And um, four of the bedrooms have en suites. Um, one of them, on, the one on the very top floor doesn't have an en suite, but there is a bathroom on the floor below um, for it. So yeah, there's there's a very luxurious in that sense. Um, inside, I changed this orientation of the stairs. They originally went um, like perpendicular to the direction of the house, and I, it just kind of cut the house in half, and I didn't really like that. So I did do a lot with the floor plan, especially on the upper levels. They're pretty much quite different. So I could accommodate the stairs being you know changed that way. So um, yeah, the the main master slash primary bedroom is in the front of the house on the second floor, which is where it was originally, and that bathroom, which you can kind of see there. I think I moved it. It used to be where the stairs are, and so I moved it to the other side of the house, and I expand it quite a bit, which you'll see. And then um, on the top floor, I do rearrange this a fair amount so I could fit in stairs that go up to the fourth floor. So yeah, there's a lot of rearranging happening, um, a lot more than I usually would do maybe in these 
kind of renovations. So even though the overall shape of the house stayed very much the same, just a big rectangle basically, I changed the upper le upper level layouts a lot because of moving these stairs. I thought it just helped a lot to have the stairs in the in the kind of like the location that they're in now. I think it just works better. But yes, and yeah, but it ends up being kind of similar with what is on each floor. So the first floor will still have the living room, dining room, and kitchen like it originally did. The second floor had two bedrooms and one bathroom. So the second floor ends up having two bedrooms, two bathrooms. The third floor had two bedrooms, one bathroom. It ends up having two bedrooms and three bathrooms on the third floor. And then the fourth floor was nothing before. And so I made that another bedroom and a uh, study. And also, so because of the sloping roof at the back here and, I, and to get the stairs going all the way up to the fourth floor, I did have to use a bit of constrained floor elevation on this ceiling so that the ceiling in the hallway on the fourth floor slopes kind of downwards to match this roof, as you can kind of tell here. And so that's what I'm doing right now is just, just using constrained floor elevation to adjust the angle of the ceiling. And I don't fully do it all right now. I actually come back quite a bit later to finish it. I don't know. I just gave up. <laughs> so, but yes, I come back and adjust that more. Anyway, um, the main reason there's a fourth floor now is I really wanted to have this kind of tower on the right side. As you can see, that goes all the way up. And I thought that kind of added a lot more presence to the house and kind of made it look quite a bit more fancy and dramatic. And since this house is huge flat sides, which is something I don't love. Um, as I mentioned before, I don't love big flat sides on houses I like there to be a little bit more interest so I did my best to kind of spruce it up a little bit I add a chimney on the left side and also actually will add a big bay window that goes up two levels on the left side as well right now it's just a little bit tiny bump out I put in but I'm going to come back and change that and on the other side of the house I put a small bump out on the third floor that sticks out I also built a garage relatively early on um, so there wasn't a garage originally but I built a very skinny garage because it can only fit a four tile wide garage there and oh yeah another thing about this house is my plan with all of these kind of base game um, library or bin houses that I'm renovating from the little library that you you know have on the edit town mode um, in the Sims 3 so yeah, these are all the houses that came with the base game, and my plan for them was just to place them in Sunset Valley, but there wasn't a good lot for this house, so I ended up having to custom place a lot just for this house. I think it's the only one that I'll do that with, but you can kind of probably already tell where this lot is. It's kind of right next to those uh, kind of quote-unquote apartment buildings um, in Sunset Valley. And you can see here, to get the brownstone, I use this wood texture, actually, this wood paneling that was from Late Night or something. I don't remember exactly what. And I just put brownstone on it, but it looks like these giant blocks of stone, which is very kind of accurate to what brownstone houses um, sometimes look like. And so I was really happy with that because I was a little worried about finding a wall texture that would fit right. But this one works so well. And right now I'm using these little roof decoration elements. So I'm using them um, in between the different floors. And at the very top here, I'm using these from Island Paradise, actually, I'm kind of overlapping them and just making them the same color as the wall. And I think that adds a nice bit of decoration up top there um, in that kind of gable. And yeah, I'm using these smaller pieces in between every floor as well. So that adds a little bit more decoration. Um, there's a term for this architecturally, and I'm forgetting it right now. It's, um, I forget, it's like banding, I don't know. It's like these bands of stone that stick out, but there's a, probably a more proper term for it that I'm just forgetting. But anyway, yeah, I think that looks um, really nice. It adds like a lot of detail to what otherwise would be flat stone. So I'm really happy with um, these and I do refine their placement um, as I do each floor. Right now they're kind of haphazardly on there, but I do refine them as I go through each floor when I furnish. Um, and then on the sides of the house, I used this brick that kind of matches the um, the chimney there. And I decided to use brick because it's not always our brownstones fully brownstones. Usually I think it's just the front of the house. You know, it has that appearance and then the sides are siding or brick or um, other materials. Obviously, it's probably not always the case, but I decided to do that here in this in this house. And, you know, having the brick, I guess, kind of um, keeps that connection to the original. Also, it had this horrible like back porch that went up all four floors with all these stairs on it. I don't know. It was absolutely bizarre. I think it was like a, a, a attempt at a fire escape, but it really wasn't working. So I added a real fire escape to the house. So it goes from um, one window on the third floor to a window on the second floor, and then there is a ladder that goes down to the first floor. Unfortunately, because it's on the back of the house, there is no fire escape for the fourth floor, but you know, there is for the other three, or the other two, I guess, second floor and third floor have access to the fire escape. 
And so I thought that was a nice um, replacement for that weird, you know, stacked porch thing that was there with all these stairs. So that's what I ended up doing here. And I was looking just for a fence. It's hard to find a good fence for that. But yeah, so yeah, I matched the um, brick on the outside to the chimney that I went with, which is from Supernatural. I like the kind of tan brick more than the bright red. But right now I am recoloring the windows. So I went with stone for like the outside trim on the windows on the front of the house that just matches the brownstone ness of it. Um, and obviously it's just white uh, for the rest of it. So you can see I'm doing that right now. And yeah, I think it really looks pretty convincing. It looks like a brownstone to me at least. So I was really happy with how the facade turned out on this house. Um, it's obviously quite a big departure from the original, but I think it definitely lives up to the name a lot better since it is now actually a brownstone. Um, and yeah, so there's also lots of windows obviously down the sides and it is like kind of strange to have this house as a standalone house. It would look obviously better if it was part of a row of houses because typically brownstones are townhouses and they're built as a row and, you know, they're not freestanding like this one is, but it's the Sims and they, you know, they just did it this way. So it's a freestanding house. Um, I also went to the house next door, this like apartment house thing. You also, you can kind of tell there briefly where the house is in Sunset Valley, but I copied the same brick walkway from that house. So I thought it helped, you know, match it into the neighborhood a little bit since there's like three of those apartment houses that all have the same exact um, brick walkways at the front and the same like concrete driveway and so I used the floor tiles that match with those so since they're all in a line even though it's obviously a very very different style house I thought that it it tied it into this like street a little bit better I thought so and that's what I decided to do and I think it looks nice in the front here it's like a little bit of an extension to the sidewalk and I also add like that little wall there as well that you know kind of uh, walls off the rest of the front I guess even though it's not fully fenced in the backyard will be fenced in but the front yard the side I guess the side yard's not fully fenced in anyway um, the windows are also green originally which I did not keep that I didn't think red and green I mean the original house is red and green not the best color combination very Christmassy um, so yeah I decided not to do that so I went with white windows which I thought looked quite a bit better and um, up here I wanted to add a little bit more detail so I think I used some of those little stone walls, so I think that looks nice. But anyway, that is the um, facade mainly, I think. Um, and then this is the back porch, which I kept. I did change. I do change it up a little bit. But anyway, here's what I was talking about with that bay window. So um, right now I'm going to add that in. I do um, two two story bay window because I thought that helped make this side of the house look a little less flat. Um, it also helped a lot make the kitchen very nice and also the primary bathroom very nice as well. So, you know, it, it added some fanciness to those, to those rooms. But yeah, essentially it's just a nice big bay window on the side just to add a little bit of decoration. But anyway, it did mean I had to change up the floor plan even more than I already had changed it up. Oh, I also had a little tiny bump out to the dining room as well, just to add some, just to add some extra nice windows. So it has a nice, nice like natural light there in the back. Since there's not really any windows on the side of the house where the garage is, I wanted the back, the back there to have some nice big windows. So I added that bump out for the dining room, and here's just some more stuff happening. I extended the um, brownstone part further down the side of the house, so it's a little bit more of it than there was, and. Yeah, so on one side it goes up with the chimney, and the other side it just goes a little bit further down. But anyway, right now I am putting brick on the bay window, so that's the bay window part right there, and recoloring some windows, just some small things. Yeah, but there's lots of windows on this bay window. It's very large, um, so it, it enhances the kitchen there, which you can see. So that does expand the kitchen, which is in the same exact place as it was. It just has that addition to it now, which is nice because it was very dark before, as you probably saw in the beginning, um, little like panning shots. It was very dark in the kitchen, so that helps brighten it up a lot. And this is the back porch, which I made a little bit more solid looking um, with like a solid foundation base. And I do actually change out those walls I put in, but there's like nice stone walls or stone fences fenced in the backyard there as well. And put a little gate there for the little alleyway between the house and the drive or the garage rather. But anyway, I also put some white siding on this little bump out here, which it kind of makes it like a little addition. I end up making that a bathroom actually. So that ends up being the only hallway bathroom in the house. It's not the powder room on the first floor. So 
Anyway, that just adds a little bit of something, something to the side there, which otherwise is very flat. And then I made the garage the white siding as well. And yeah, more windows and stuff like that, basically just doing all that kind of thing. But yeah, that is, I think most of the outside really, like the structure is all kind of there. The floor plan is all kind of there at this point. So I think we're going to jump into furnishing pretty soon. It took me a while. Oh, actually, the floor plan's not all there yet. Um, I do have to do this, deal with this bathroom. So yes, the the primary bedroom gets much bigger, actually, with the addition of this this bay window because I shifted the bathroom down. And then, yeah, this, this primary bedroom is absolutely huge. Um, it's, it is gigantic, as you can see. Um, and so is the bathroom, actually, as well. It's also very big. And right now I'm just getting some doors in um, just around the house as well, basically. So, you know, it's good to have. And some fences as well, which is always nice. Oh, and here is where I re revisit the little um, ceiling here, which I did not fully, fully like, make it angled. So had a weird flat bit at the end, so I just made that look a little bit better. But there you go. So that's where the ceiling kind of dips down there under the roof, because it's a slanted roof. Anyway, um, so mainly the main changes on the first floor was obviously the staircase. So I moved the staircase. You can It's hard to tell where it was, but it's where that dark like wood paneling is. That's where the staircase was originally. And so I moved it over so it's parallel with the house, and it's off to the side. And so I enclosed the entrance. I thought it would be better than to have the entrance right into the living room as it was before because it's kind of a very old style house and a lot of these houses townhouses brownstones have like an enclosed entrance with the staircase so i made sure that it's closed off now and the living room is much bigger because the staircase is not in it anymore so, so now the staircase is out of the living room the living room gained like an extra I don't know, like two by five area. So they made it much bigger because originally the living room was oddly just four chairs around a coffee table and that was it. So I um, obviously added a fireplace and then a lot more furniture. So that helps a lot with making the living room feel more like a nice living room in a, in a big house like this, especially. So yeah, I did that. And I'm also working on the wood floors right now, which are kind of interesting. I kind of did this with a house, um, the first house renovation um, in this series. So yeah, you can kind of see I'm using this wood with the like little trim on it to make this kind of nice pattern. And so I did that in the in the first floor, also on the second floor landing here and the third floor landing as well. Um, so I'm just kind of doing that. And um, yeah, so fancy wood floors, I like to do them. I think that it, and in houses like, like this, I think that it helps a lot, make it look fancier than just doing a, you know, generic wood floor. Um, but yes. And then of course, also the primary bedroom gets the same treatment as well. So gets the fancy wood floors in here. So I'm just doing that um, throughout the bedroom. So yes, lots of wood flooring happening. Um, so there you go. And then also this guest bedroom on the third floor gets it as well. The other bedrooms are all going to be carpet. But um, those two bedrooms are the fancier ones, so they get the wood floors. But anyway, I think we're going to do the living room first in this house. So I'm just doing some slight recoloring to these windows because I accidentally put the stone on the inside. But anyway, yeah, recoloring the walls here. I kept the same wallpaper as the original living room, just kind of adjusted the wood tone um, and the paneling a little bit. And then I also got in some nice bookshelves. The carpet was pretty horrible, so I will change that as well. And I got it in a couch in here, as there was no couch originally. Um, there's also a TV there over the fireplace. There was no TV originally either, I don't think. Um, then I also have this little area um, on the mantle, um, I guess not the mantle, the hearth. I don't know what you call it. I guess it's the hearth um, there. So there's like some bricks there, and then also some nice tile there on the fireplace around as well. But yes, yeah, so that's the fireplace right there, um, kind of coming in, getting that all done. And yeah, so I mean, it's not a huge room, but it's much larger than it was originally, which is nice. I think the bay window was there originally, but yeah, I think it was. Um, but yeah, I'm recoloring right now. It's kind of a very neutral colored room. So you have this like kind of leather couch and chairs. Those chairs are original. I just recolored them. And then there's your rug color and then a little lamp here that was there already. Just recoloring that as well, um, just so that looks a little bit nicer not like a kind of weird yellow color so yeah and um oh also recoloring the oh yeah the the front porch area i guess um, the stairs didn't recolor for some reason so i had to replace them later on but 
I will uh, make those match. And then there's little lights. I don't know. But anyway, back to the living room. Um, I also had this tiny little fence, just a little bit of detail there between the bricks and the wood floor. So there you go. Very slight detail. And also we're going to get in curtains, of course. So that's always good to have. Um, so recoloring those very neutral colors in here. So those all kind of are like kind of a off white or light grayish color. Some nice lighting, um, and I'm going to put an end table over there as well, and a nice plant in the corner. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much going to be this room, I think. It's not too crazy or anything. Um, I was going to put CDs, but I didn't think that really worked. So anyway, that is, I think, the living room. So now we're going to do the kitchen. So the kitchen is in the same place, just has that bay window now, so it adds a lot of nice natural light. So I did um, reposition things a little bit. And I also now had room to make an eat-in kitchen, which I thought made sense because the only other dining room is the formal dining room. So it's nice to have like an informal dining area as well. And so that's kind of where the bay window comes in. And I kept that same kind of tile. So the tile that was on the floor originally had these like orange, very like patterned orange, bright colored tiles in it. So I just kind of kept the same tile, but without those. So it's just a solid solid tile now. It's kind of this beige color, but you know, it's not the most stylish, but it is the color that was there. So I wanted to keep it. And then the cabinets, I kept the cabinets, just recolored them and replaced the modern top ones with matching ones. I don't know why the top cabinets didn't match, but you know, it's just one of those things that's not really that surprising. Um, so yeah, we have all the appliances, I think are the same ones, just recoloring them basically. So just doing that. And there's a little trash can there. And there's your little eat-in dining table, which I thought was nice. So again, nice informal area. And then I also put a ceiling fan in. That's a store item. I think it's from the Now and Then Century Manor set. But I thought a ceiling fan was nice in the kitchen. So put that in. And recoloring here as well. So just recoloring the little dining set in here. Um, going for kind of a greenish color on the cushions there. And then maybe also on the curtains. I guess we'll see. Yeah, kind of a greenish color. I don't know. Just doing that, and so there you got some curtains in there as well, and I think I put a tile backsplash in too because right now there is just kind of just giant white walls, and so I thought it'd be nice to have a bit of tile, a bit of something there behind the counters, so I think I'm going to do that right now. So yeah, there's just some tile just behind the counters there, and it's just matching the floor. A little phone there, and then um, I think some little decor decorative items, so yeah, but that's the kitchen. The dining room had some green accents in it, which were kind of interesting. So you had this green on the chairs and also this like green, um, like, um, oh, I forget what it's called. This like green counter and cabinets on one wall. So I decided to keep the green theme. I went with nice big leather chairs though and made them green. I made the walls green as well, actually. I kept the same wallpaper pattern, but made it a little bit less egregious and made it green as well. And I also kept that same um, counters, these same counters here, just kind of adjusted the shade of green because they were kind of extreme. And um, also I kind of expanded them a little bit. So it's like a little bit less small looking on that wall, but I thought that was nice. And so I, I did keep that kind of vibe of the green in here, but just toned it down so it's not so kind of in your face. So yeah, um, nice little plant there on the table and also the yellow horse is there as well. And you can see those nice big windows at the back of the dining room. So that was a little addition that I added just so that, um, you know, some nice large windows in the dining room. But yeah, I mean, the main additions of the house were this bay window area here on the first and second floors and that tiny little bump out um, there for the dining room. And then of course the fourth floor. So, you know, those were really the main additions. A lot of it was just rearranging the floor plan so I could, you know, move the staircase and all of that. But yeah, um, the dining room is pretty much done at this point just have like a little love seat here in the bay window so I think that's going to be pretty much it for the dining room and then I'll move on to I think the powder room which is very interestingly um actually I'm gonna be able to do the entrance first and then I'll move on to the powder room but yeah the entrance I kept the um I think it's actually yeah it's the same wallpaper oh no I changed the wallpaper actually um because the, the entrance used to be part of the living room there wasn't really a separate entrance so I kind of didn't have anything to go off of here, so I just chose my own wallpapers and stuff, so nothing to really carry over, but yeah, it's a nice more formal entrance there, and now we're going to do the powder room, which is orange and blue, so I kept that color scheme, but just made it a little bit more palatable, so I made these like small blue tiles, and then I put orange on the top of the wall, and then made the floors white, um, 
So I think that helps quite a bit with making it look a little bit better um, since it's a little crazy. Also, originally the door to the backyard or the back porch was through this bathroom in the original house, actually where that window is right now. So that was kind of strange. So I moved the door to the backyard to the dining room and put a window in the bathroom instead. So I think that makes more sense. I'm not really sure why it was that way. It's very strange, but anyway, um, that's the first floor, so that's good. And I just added a laundry room to the second floor here by splitting up what was going to be a bathroom. So um, that's good because there wasn't really a place for a laundry room. And here I'm just, uh, you know, doing the little landing area, recoloring the railings and stuff and all that good thing, all those good things. But yeah, this is the landing on the second floor. So um, just adding in a nice little runner and a little um, end table here, like I guess a little side table against the wall with a mirror over it, I believe. Maybe, yeah. So, you know, making a nice little fancy area there. But we're going to move on now to the primary bedroom, which um, is originally like this turquoise and then with a red at the bottom. You can kind of see that wall color still lurking there. Um, so I do keep the green part, but not the red. And here I'm just adjusting these little um, stone bits on the outside, which I mentioned before. I was going to adjust them as I went through each level. So um, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm kind of getting them in and tweaking it so they're not clipping through the wall because they were otherwise kind of clipping in, which wasn't great. So, but there you go. That's um, adjusted now on the second floor at least. And what else am I doing here? Some lights, I guess. That's fun. Oh yeah, here's where I add actually the third floor bathroom because there needed to be a bathroom that wasn't an ensuite for the fourth floor bedroom. But anyway, back to this bedroom. So yeah, I kept the kind of turquoise greenish wall color, but um, got rid of that red at the bottom. And then the bed here is actually from Supernatural, which is quite a cool bed. And yeah, it has that same kind of color on it that was on the original bed. Um, and then I'm just kind of, um, you know, putting in the rest of the furniture. But yeah, this is a huge room. It has a balcony as well, which is pretty cool. And that's kind of over over the front door area. But it also has a bay window and it has a huge ensuite. So yeah, this is truly a, a gigantic bedroom. Um, yeah, very, very massive, as you can tell. So yeah, one of the, I usually don't do rooms this big, but it just kind of happened this way. So um, yeah, I got a nice little plant there in the corner over by where the bathroom door is. Um, it's taking my sweet time to recolor that. Um, but you know, you have a nice big rug in here, which is good. It fits the space because there's just a lot of space in this room. And then I'm also going to put in a couple armchairs and stuff. And also I think a little like makeup table um, as well as a little bookshelf there. Just some objects to kind of fill up this space because it is such a huge room. You know, you kind of have to have to use the space in here pretty well. Um, you know, you don't want it to look like a, I don't want I didn't want it to look like a giant empty room. So I was trying to just make sure it has a good amount of furniture in it. The rug definitely helps because it fills out that space. But yeah, like I said, there's a couple armchairs here as well, so that kind of um, you know makes it look nicer and, and fills out that space. And I also put. A love seat in the bay window as well so there you go that's very fancy and yeah I think that's the room though it's also a closet of course I add closets to all my bedrooms so you know the original house obviously did not have closets but you know they're purely decorative but I think they add a lot to a house so I got those in there now the bathroom is huge I kept the original floors and walls from the second floor bathroom which actually was where the stairs are now so I moved it to this side of the house and put it mostly in this giant bay window area. So you have this like very dramatic kind of tub section. And then, you know, the rest of the room is just, it's very, it's very big. Um, and you have, uh, you know, double sinks, which is nice. And a couple of mirrors there, of course, to go with that. And then um, just recoloring everything for now. So just, uh, you know, recoloring the tiles in the shower here. You have a nice corner shower. Um, and just doing that so you know taking my time to tweak those tiles got to make them just right and then getting in obviously little decorations and stuff like the hand towels and the toilet paper and all that kind of stuff and like little decorations and stuff to go on the counter i think i was looking for perfume bottles it took me a while but there they are i also put a medicine cabinet in next to the next to the um um, what do you call that shower and yeah i also got some plants in here as well since there's so much space i thought it would be nice um, and reoriented the tub there and got a couple little floor mats. So 
Yeah, that is the primary bathroom. Now, this is the bedroom that used to be at the back of the house, so it's in the same general location, although it is much smaller than the original bedroom because, of course, now it has an ensuite and there's the whole master and, you know, bedroom bathroom area that's much bigger now. But this was originally a kid's room that had the same green wallpaper, so I kept it. I had two twin beds in here originally. I, um, I kept just one because there's now, you know, so many bedrooms, there's no need to put two, new, two children in this one room. So, you know, it's just um, a single bed bedroom um, but yeah, and this is actually the laundry room right here, which I, I snatched um, from what well, wasn't going to be part of that bedroom and bathroom. So I realized there needed to be a laundry room somewhere in this house. So that's where I put it. It's on the second floor landing here. Um, and so yeah, just recoloring little um, clothes. There's also a sink in here, which is nice and a nice mirror there. But yeah, I think that's, you know, the laundry room pretty much a little plant. That's fun. And there you go. Um, anyway, back to this bedroom. So yeah, pretty simple kids room. I switched out the bed, but I kept the wallpaper. I kept the green kind of color scheme in here. Um, I just kind of changed the bed spread out. And actually I changed out most of the furniture. I think all the furniture I change out. Um, so yeah, but I also end up putting a little computer desk in here. I think it's one of two computers in the house. There's a, a office on the top floor that has a computer. So this bedroom also has one as well. And yeah, right now I'm just re, um, we're not recoloring. I'm putting in posters at the moment. So getting in just some fun posters and stuff around. And also, yeah, there's a desk and a um, nice little chair there for it. There's a laptop. So yeah, that's what I was saying. In this bedroom, actually, um, you'd have to climb over the desk into the fire escape um, if this was real life, because the fire escape window is on the, um, above the desk there. So yeah, um, anyway, getting in um, some curtains in here, some more lamps, a couple beanbag chairs. Um, a little stereo, um, and our fun little bit of artwork there, and yeah, so it's pretty much it for this bedroom, I think, um, you know, pretty much getting there, getting a rug in as well, so yeah, just a fun little kids room, and then I'm also going to do the ensuite bathroom, so this bedroom, of course, did not have an ensuite origin, actually, I think it did, I think it was like a Jack and Jill situation with the primary bedroom, which is kind of a strange setup, but yes, now it has its own ensuite bathroom, which is nice, it's the smallest bathroom, we're one of the it's one of the smaller bathrooms in the house, but you know it's fine. It's nice. Um, it gets the job done, and uh, yeah, also just adding in some towels actually back into this main bathroom. So that has that as a fun bit of decoration. But yeah, so just doing this bathroom, recoloring the sink and toilet a few times actually to get just the right shade of green. You know, again with these houses, it's like supposed to be an older house, so I'm not going for super new look. It's still supposed to be kind of dated, just better dated, if that makes sense. I think I explain this pretty much now in every one of these videos where I'm doing an older style house. Um, so yeah, on the third floor, again, I have to readjust these little decorative item, little decorative um, stone bits on the outside, this little ledge here. So just adjusting it so it looks nice. And yeah, doing that right now, going kind of all around the house here or around the sides and stuff. Um, so yeah, and what's happened now? So anyway, because this house is fairly large and there's only one living room all the way down the first floor, I decided to add a second less formal living space on this third floor landing because I had all this room here. And so I thought it was kind of a good place to make a second kind of bonus living room. So yeah, and also here you can see this bathroom up here that is just a hallway bathroom because the um, because all the bedroom, all the bathrooms in the house are en suites. Um, all the bathrooms with a shower are en suites. And the the bedroom on the fourth floor didn't have a bathroom, so I needed to add this one here so that there would be a bathroom for that bedroom. So anyway, that's what's here. So it's kind of small, a little cramped actually, um, in that little hallway space. I kind of had to find a place to to like sneak it in, but I think it works. It kind of utilizes that bump out there and kind of makes it seem like there's a purpose for it to be there. So you know, that's pretty much the whole reason there. So yeah, there's, this is just kind of an extra bathroom that I'm putting in. Also, it's good, I guess, since it's like kind of a supposed to be a living area on the third floor, it's good to have um, a bathroom there that you can get to without having to go through a bedroom or without having to go all the way back down to the first floor. So anyway, yeah, so it's kind of just a little bonus living area. I got a TV up here as a little game, gaming center. Um, and then uh, I guess I'll recolor it in a moment, but this is supposed to be the guest room for the house on the third floor there. Um, and then the back is going to be like a teen's room kind of, but anyway, yeah, so recoloring, um, this living room area. So the originally in the house, this bedroom, I think at the front went across the whole front of the house, but, um, now I split it up between this kind of living room area and the bedroom that was off to the side. 
And you know, the layout is different because I moved the stairs around. So that kind of changed up the layout quite a bit. But anyway, yeah, so you have a nice um, area up here with nice couches, like the kind of more casual looking couches up here, um, less kind of stiff and formal as in the downstairs living room. Um, also a little bookshelf in that corner there, but yeah, just some little decorative items and stuff, but that's pretty much it. Um, this bedroom in the front on the third floor used to be kind of like a nursery and it had this wallpaper in it, which I did end up keeping. I just changed the color of it. So it's now going to be like a blue color. Um, as you can see, it was the same kind of floral wallpaper. Um, and yeah, so this is supposed to be a guest room since there's like already a you know, primary bedroom, there's two kids rooms, a teens room. So I thought the fifth bedroom should just be a guest room. Um, so that's what this is here, and you know, it's pretty big. It's very fancy guest room, so you have like the fancy wood floors. I think this is the second biggest bedroom in the house. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a good size. Um, has like those nice big windows out the front. Um, and then it uh, also, of course, has an ensuite bathroom, which is the blue bathroom, which you may have seen in the beginning of the video, and I kind of had the little like um, panning shots of the original house on the third, the third floor bathroom was the blue bathroom, blue and gold. Um, so I actually decided to keep the blue tile in there, not the gold sink though, but you'll see when we get to that. Um, but just doing a few details in here, those gold mirrors were actually from the original bathroom. So I put them in the bedroom. Um, and then I'm just putting in some, uh, clothes in the closet up here on the third, in this third floor bedroom. Yeah. So now it's trying to tackle this bathroom, which probably moved around. I don't even know where it was originally, probably Maybe it was in about that location, I'm not entirely sure, but it had this very striking blue tile, which I decided to keep um, just on the floor. So, you know, it's, it is it is like maybe a little bit bold, I guess, because, you know, they really went crazy with the colors and these like um, base game houses that the Sims team made. So, you know, it is kind of a bold color, but yeah, I have this gray wall, very neutral colored wall um, with some like white tiles on it. I actually made the countertops a gray, um, so it's a little bit less um, bold in here as it was. But, you know, like the the fixtures and fittings and the little decorations, the towels, all kind of a blue color. So I thought that all kind of helped, uh, you know, tie it all together. And the bedroom also kind of has a blue color scheme to it as well. So you know, it all kind of works, I guess, in that way. But anyway, that's the blue bathroom. So now this is the final bedroom on the third floor. So this was originally kind of just a gray bedroom, probably was supposed to be like a teen's room, I guess. So I, I adjusted it so it's not so gray. It's kind of more of like a dusty pink kind of color, but it still kind of has that similar kind of energy to it, I guess, kind of like these grayish tones um, or very desaturated tones in here. Um, and now this bedroom has an ensuite now as well. So, you know, but it's, it's, so it's a little bit smaller, I think, than it may have been originally, but, you know, it has an ensuite. Um, here I'm just adjusting the carpet, getting in some mirrors, also getting in some curtains as well in here. Um, so there you go. And yeah, so just putting in all the little things and doodads and what's, 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 some, what's, some, what's a, whatever the word is, what's a gadget? I don't know. Um, <laughs> just random things in here. So, you know, just kind of filling it out and some posters and stuff. Um, and a little mirror in the corner there and a little plant and what else some little magazines and another poster yeah another poster there you go oh i also put this mirror in as well i kind of had all this random stuff on it so i thought that was kind of add a little bit of personality to the room and there's also a rug of course and yeah so i mean i think that's pretty much it for this bedroom Oh, I put a mirror over the bed as well, but there you go. And then this is the ensuite bathroom. There was no ensuite bathroom originally here, so this one's not really based on anything. It's just kind of made to match this bedroom. Found this kind of fun floor tile, so I decided to go with that. And then um, this tile wall that I've used in a couple of the other bathrooms, just kind of in a color scheme that matches the bedroom. And yeah, so it's all pretty much the same stuff that the other bedrooms ensuite has on this floor. It's just obviously a different color. So just kind of, you know, doing that and getting all that in kind of is that dusty kind of pink mauve kind of color scheme, you know, that matches the bedroom and just getting in little towels and stuff, little decorations, all that kind of stuff in here as well. So just doing that, um, there's nice little curtains on the windows and some a mat on the floor. I think that's pretty much it. I think. Yeah. Um, oh, the closet, of course, can never forget the closet. So there you go. Um, don't worry, it's not forgotten. So now we're moving on to the fourth floor, finally. Jeez, this is taking a very long time. It's a very long video. So yeah, we're on the fourth floor now. I have to adjust the little stone um, bits up here as well because they were kind of out of whack. So 
just doing that. Now I'm doing those little adjustments. And then also I ran them across here as well. So that um, stone wall looks a little bit more nice. But yeah, there you go. Um, let's see what I'm going to do first. I think the office maybe. Um, so yeah, this is where the office or study is very high up in the house. So very secluded, of course, but I mean, naturally, if you wanted to download this house and change it up to be a sixth bedroom, you could do that. Um, so yeah, that, that room up top, um, could be a sixth bedroom as well, which would definitely make this house very, very big. Um, I mean, it is still very, very big, of course. So anyway, um, yeah, but it's a pretty simple study. Um, it's not a huge room, got like a wall of bookshelves here. Um, and, uh, like a desk, of course. So there you go. It's like a nice roll, roll top desk, I guess you call that. Um, with a computer, a phone, um, matching chair, of course. And, um, I don't know what else, what else do I even put in here? Probably a couple of chairs, I think. Um, just recoloring the walls, just simple walls in here. Yeah. A couple other chairs by the window. Um, just recoloring those at the moment, but yeah, I mean, pretty simple study, um, type of deal in here. Um, nothing too crazy, um, but it's good to have, important to have, especially in a house like this. I feel like it's, 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 you know, makes sense to have a study. So I made sure to put that in, especially since the house originally did not have that. Um, and then in the hallway here, I put a chess table. Don't know if it's usable or not because of that wax ceiling. So it's probably not usable, but even if it's not, it's nice decoration. So, you know, you have a little chess set there in the hallway. Um, and yeah, also just recoloring a little rug. And then the last room in the house, dun 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 dun, dun it's a kid's room on the fourth floor here. So um, yeah, it's a nice giant window though, which is very fun. And this is the only bedroom in the house without the ensuite. So that's why I needed to add that bathroom downstairs. Um, so this person in this room could have a bathroom that they could use. And yeah, so this room is like a very, I don't even know what color to call that. I guess like a lavender kind of blue violet sort of deal, but very desaturated. Um, fun for poster bed there, um, which is nice and very purple bedspread. I don't usually do purple. I feel like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like I don't usually go for purple. So it's kind of different. Um, and then yeah, nice dresser, side table mirror there. Um, very nice. Um, getting all that kind of stuff in here. Um, and yeah, so, you know, going to get in all the little decorations and doodads, um, little lamp there on the side table, which is nice. Um, little alarm clock. You know, nice little details, nice curtains in here as well um, that match the room. So just doing that. And then um, I think some sort of poster or like butterfly painting, um, little little things. Oh, doing a little um, outside stuff right now because I found those things in the catalog and thought, oh, I should add those. Um, little purple guy. Oh, that's nice on the, on the dresser. Um, and what else? What else? A little rainbow and a little teddy bear. And then what's coming up next? Let's see. Let's see. And a rug, maybe. No, a beanbag chair. There definitely will be a rug, though. Don't worry. There's the rug. And I think that's the room. So pretty simple. Getting a little closet in, of course. Um, always got to have the closet. And that's the inside of the house. So now we're going to move on to the outside. So that's cool. And I changed out the staircase because for some reason the stairs that were there originally couldn't be recolored. So um, I, re I rectified that. And then I changed out the stairs at the back as well. And... Um, they also changed out the railings here, so it all kind of matches the brownstone vibe. And yeah, and I also want to recolor the fire escape right now, so it's kind of a nice metal that makes sense. So I'm just doing that right now, um, recoloring the railings. I wish there was matching railings for the what, what I have on the stairs there, but there are no railings that match it, which is a little annoying. So I had to use these more modern ones that don't quite go, but it was just hard to find something. I also added a brick patio out here behind the garage as well, so it kind of adds a little bit more outdoor space. Um, which I thought was nice, but yeah, there's not too much left actually to do here. Just a bit of landscaping, a bit of outdoor furniture, um, things like that, you know, I'm going to do, of course, um, probably some more outdoor lighting, but maybe not. I don't know. Um, I think actually I did all that. So yeah, it's a couple of lounge chairs out here. Um, and then a little like dining set on the back, um, back deck patio, whatever you want to call it, and a little grill. And then, you know, just some, um, plants and stuff. So yeah, we're very close to the end here on this very long video. So if you've st stuck around this long, I really appreciate it. You know, there's going to be some screenshots coming up in a couple minutes. So you'll be able to see the before and then the after. So you can kind of re remind yourself of what the house looked like before and then see some nice screenshots of the finished
finished product. Um, you can also download the house as always. There's a link in the description below. Um, and yeah, if you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you consider subscribing. I post more videos like this. So I also have a lot more videos like this on my channel. If you're interested, you can go check those out. And yeah, so just doing some terrain painting here. So that's just kind of the final touches um, just around the house. Oh, also the garage. I forgot about that. And so got to do the garage as well, but that's not too complicated. We'll just take but a moment here just to um, get some wallpaper in here, um, which actually ended up going with a paint instead of a wood panel. Um, very fun, narrow garage. Don't usually do garages like this, but there's the only space for it. So um, yeah, there you go. Also some nice lights and a little tiny workbench at the back and a car. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoy the screenshots that are coming up um, and I hope to see you in the next video. And as always, I hope you have a great rest of your day.